Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs and back to our Playwright page object model series. In the last video, what we have seen, we have uh, created uh, two pages. One is login page. And uh, before that, we have already created the home page. And then we have created this base test where we are calling different methods. And the base test is the parent of login test as well as the home page test. So if you see last time that we have uh, seen the login page test that we have covered, and then we are calling the page methods and asserting over there, right? So till login that we have already covered and we were actually executing in the form of a uh, runner also that we have created two test runners over here and then thread count equal to two parallel equal to test alt also we have used this. Today, I'm going to talk about one small thing. First of all, that, that how to use the concept of thread local. Thread local is a class which is available in JDK uh, 1.8 after Java 8 has actually got introduced. Thread locals gives the guarantee that whenever you are initializing any specific object with the thread local, it will give you the local copy for a specific thread for that particular object. Same thing we were using in Selenium also the concept of thread local, which will help me to produce the parallel execution properly, which will uh, help me to execute the test cases uh, with parallel execution with the multiple report generation. So it is always a good practice to use a thread local whenever you're using, especially with the Java, because all the Java APIs, especially with the Playwright API and the Selenium APIs, they are by default asynchronized. So in order to achieve that, we have to use the concept of thread local for the better test management, as well as the better thread copy of the uh, page context or playwright context or browser context or page context that you're using it. Same thing in Selenium, we had to initialize uh, web driver with the thread local. How to initialize it? It's very simple. What you just need to do, what exactly I'm trying to explain that, okay? Because this is a page which being returned from this particular method, which will be used by multiple threads. You think about it, let's see, for example, I have uh, running my test cases with the three threads. So for example, let's see, this is thread number one, thread number two, and thread number three. So this thread also will attack this method. This thread also will try to use this method and this thread also will use this particular method. So this thread is actually returning the page reference over here. So when we initialize this page reference, we say, okay, fine, let's initialize with the thread local. You take a local copy of this. You also take a local copy of this particular page and you also take a local copy of this page. So same page reference, I mean, same page object will be created and but object is same, but we are just creating the local copies of that particular uh, object and then we are giving to the individual threads over here. So that what will happen? This guy, this thread will be having the individual copy of page, individual copy of this page, and individual copy of page over here for this particular thread also. So that is a better management. This page is executing having its own scenario. This is having its own scenario. This is having its own scenario, and they will not disturb each other. They will not impact each other. That is a major advantage you will be getting with the thread local. That's why the name itself, like the local copy for each and every thread will be given to you. And it's a Java feature, not the playwright or Selenium feature. It's a Java feature actually, right? Perfect. So how to use this? Let's see. So in order to do that, uh, whatever the different uh, uh, high level attribute uh, variables that we are using browser, browser contacts and page, we have to initialize that. So thread local says that you have to initialize the thread local, for example, with the uh, thread local class, and then I'm going to create the object of a thread local. And here you have to give the generics. So I say, okay, fine. The browser instance should be registered with the thread local. So let's see if, if I'm saying that, okay, yeah, this is my thread local browser, which is equal to a new thread local at the class level that we have to declare here like this. You can just, after that, you can use it here and thread local is a class coming from java.lang package here. You can see that it's saying, create a thread local variable. And if you mouse over on thread local, it's saying, see this carefully, this class provides thread local variables. These variables differ from their normal counterparts in that each thread that access only via get or set method, we will talk about it, has its own independently initialized copy of that particular variable. It means every thread will be getting their own respective copy. How to declare that? For example, that this is that they, they have given and always make sure that, okay, the thread local copy that you are creating, it should be a private copy over here. And then we will create one getter and setter method to get and then set the value of this particular private thread local. So this is the browser that we have initialized. Same thing we have to initialize with the browser context and the page. So I'm going to use browser context and then I'm going to use a page also. And I'm giving a name, something like this, let's see thread local browser 
<clears throat> uh, context. And this is your thread local page that we have initialized over here, right? If you really want to write both the sites, so you can write both the sites also, that is also fine. Okay, now these are the private variables that we have declared. Now we have to create two more methods over here. See this carefully. One is set and one is get. Set means whenever you have to initialize your page or initialize your browser or browser context, that time you have to use it, right? So in that case, what exactly I'm going to do that? If you really want to define the playwright also with the thread local, that also you can do it. So let's do one thing. I'm going to initialize my playwright uh, with the thread local. So I'll say, okay, hey, this is thread local playwright. It means whenever someone is using this, we will be using the thread local copy of that particular playwright for the parallel execution. Right. So what exactly I'm going to do that I'm saying, okay, playwright is equal to new playwright dot create. So instead of writing like this, see, I'm going to comment it out. I'm going to use thread local playwright dot set method that I'm going to use it. And then I'm going to use this playwright dot uh, create method over here. This will do what this will set the playwright <clears throat> right now. This is not pointing to anything. It has no value. This thread local playwright. So I'm saying, okay, fine. Set with playwright dot create. So playwright dot create will give you the playwright uh, object over here, and that will be initialized with the playwright, a thread local playwright here. So in that case, I'll be getting a local copy. It means I'm going to set a local copy over here. In order to get the local copy, then you have to create a getter over here. So in order to create a get method, I am simply saying, okay, fine. This is my public <coughs> static. Uh, let's see, initially it's void. I'm saying, okay, fine, get uh, playwright. I'm going to use it. And get playwright method will say, okay, fine. I'm going to return what the thread local uh, dot driver, thread local, uh, whatever that we have used. So I'll do one thing. We have to make it a static variable so that we can use them directly. So I'm making these variables a static in nature like this. So I'm going to use thread local playwright dot and then you have to use simple get over here, get method, and then it will return what it is giving you the local copy. See playwright local copy will be given. So instead of void, what should I write? Instead of void, I have to write, I'm giving you the playwright only the local copy of the playwright. I'm giving you that. Right. So likewise, we have to create four more get methods. One is for browser, browser context, and one for the page. Right. So I'll say, okay, fine. This is get uh, browser. Okay. And then this will return the browser over here. And then I'm simply saying that I'm going to use thread local browser dot get method. We have to use it here. Same thing. Now we have to use the browser context. So this will return the browser context. And uh, this is your thread local browser context dot get method. We have to use it here. Right. And then I'm saying, okay, fine. This is my get browser context. Okay. And then finally we have to use the get page. So I'm going to use the uh, page here and uh, this is my get page method. And then I'm going to use thread local page here. Okay. So see this, this is playwright get, this is browser get, this is browser context get, and this is the local copy of the page. We will be getting it. So first you have to set it and then you have to get. So set method we have already written for this guy. Now, same thing we have to use with the browser also. So we are not going to initialize like this. We are going to use the concept of thread local. Guys, it is always a best practice to use the thread local. Thread local browser dot set. And how will you set? This guy is saying, okay, you have to give me the browser value. Who will give you the browser value? This one. You can directly write this browser variable also, but better to write this entire line of code here from here to copy and then paste it over here. Okay. Same thing for other guys also for Firefox and everything that we have to update. So I'll do one thing. This is, let's see, uh, I'm going to up, <clears throat> do one thing. I'm just going to comment it out and then I'm going to use it this one over here, but instead of Chromium, I'm going to use Firefox. Same thing for Safari also. So I'm going to just comment it out. I'm going to use this line and uh, make sure that, okay, we are not doing any mistake. And then this is the web kit <coughs> web kit. And then finally, we are going to use Chrome browser, just comment it out and then use this set method for the uh, Chrome browser and the browser will be, sorry, the browser will be Chromium dot this Chrome. So yeah, Chromium over here, which will give you, sorry, uh, Chromium here, copy this and paste it over here. And then we are setting this 
uh, chromium. So in that case, I'll do one thing. This is the set where we have to use it here. Copy this and uh, here, use it over here. Perfect. So chromium will give you the Chrome binary. Now we have to start creating the browser context and the page. So how will you create the browser context? See this in order to create the browser context. First of all, that we have to use the TL browser context. Again, you have to use a set method and it's saying that you have to give me the browser context value. So who will give me the browser context value? So the browser context value will be set <clears throat> over here with the help of a browser, that third local browser that we have already used that, right? So in order to set it, so what exactly we are going to use that I simply say, okay, fine. This is my get browser dot. And uh, yeah, simple write this particular get browser. And then we are going to use a dot new context over here. So what exactly this method will do the third browser context I'm going to set. So this method set method will initialize this thread browser context. And whenever you want to get it, you can call this particular method, right? So simple set method is to set the value and get method is for the getting the value. Now we have to initialize the page. So I'll say, okay, find thread local page dot set method. We have to use this and who will give you the page. So page will be given by the browser context method. So I'm saying, okay, fine, get browser context and then give me a new page. That's it. And then after that, you have to launch the URL. So how will you launch the URL? Then you have to launch the URL with the help of again, get page method because page is responsible for that. So I'm going to write, this is my get page dot, uh, navigate dot uh, two and whatever navigate dot, uh, simple navigate method that we have to use it. And then whatever the URL is there, we have to pass that. So URL, which is coming from the properties file prop dot get property and the property name is this particular URL. If any trim space is there, use a trim over here. Right. So nothing guys don't get confused. It's very simple. The only thing that we have written that everything now we have initialized with the help of thread local. Everything, whatever you can see that, okay, we have initialized thread local browser context page and the playwright in the browser. We have created one get method and we have initialized the set method in the logic. And now we don't need to write the plain script over here like that. Right. So. Uh, this is what we have to use it. Now let's try that. Is it really working or not? So I'll do one thing. I'll go back to my testng.xml file and then I'll try to run it. So it will run in the parallel mode and then these two threads will never disturb to each other. So here you can see that we are running on the Chromium and here you can see nice two test cases are absolutely fine. So tomorrow, if you have 50 test cases also, uh, 50 threads that you are generating or let's say 10 threads that you are generating every thread will get the local copy of uh, local copy of these variables that you have created over here this is a major advantage you will be getting it in fact in your script whenever you want to use the copy of browser context or a page context you can just always call any of them now you don't need to initialize the uh, the, you know, page in the browser and the browser context again and again, later on, if you really want to use the page dot locator, you simply call this method every time. It will always give you the respective copy of that particular page because they have already initialized set over here. This is always giving you a new page here. So that's all for this particular video, guys. I hope it's clear in the next video. We will talk about more and more pages, a couple of more pages. We will see that then we will try to integrate with the LAR report and the extend report as well. And then we will try to run the test cases with the help of Maven and everything. Perfect. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and God bless you all.